Hello, so today I have another tutorial for you and it is on a tool called the HIR Mapper tool and this fits into step two in the Borland Genetics DNA Reconstruction Method, which is mapping. And uh, what it does is it takes a phased kit and it maps all of the uh, matches from the Borland Genetics database of that kit onto the chromosomes. And uh, it does it in kind of a neat way that's useful for DNA reconstruction and that it allows you to drill back one generation further from the donor because it creates two groups, uh, one being paternal relative to the donor and one being maternal relative to the donor. So use case here is like when I've phased my data, let's say use my mother, and I come up with a missing parent you know, kit for my father, and it's a phased kit that represents the DNA that I inherited from my father, and it gets attached to a profile from my father if you use the missing parent tool. So then if you were to run that through the uh, HIR mapper, which is exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do uh, in, this, in this tutorial, it's going to then uh, allow me to map all of the matches and all the relevant matches in the Borland Genetics database that match this kit for my father. And it's gonna let me assign them to which of his parents uh, the, the, the different match clusters belong to. So I think it's, uh, it, it, it'll be pretty intuitive once I show you, you know, once you see it. Uh, it's one of those things that's probably best, best looked at visually as opposed to talked about. But uh, anyway, that's how it fits into Borland Genetics. It is a subscription tool, and I think this is probably one of the first demos I've done on, on subscription tools. Um, and at the end, I'll show, also show you another tool that's uh, related to it. It's the phase map blocker, and it's basically where these maps are stored within Borland Genetics. You can access them in a number of different places, but there's one central location called the phase map blocker. Um, okay, so let's get into the demo now. I'm gonna show you how to make one of these maps and, and what it looks like. And we're gonna do uh, a map of, we're gonna map the matches to my father's uh, phased uh, DNA kit. Okay, so here we are on the brand new Borland Genetics homepage, and what's new uh, that I've added, well, I guess it's only new depending on when you're watching this video, uh, is I've added some uh, brief videos on and uh, a section on getting started, um, contact information, link to the Facebook users group, other social media links, and uh, the most recent blog post. So there's more information here than there used to be. So if it looks a little different, um, the, it used to, before it would have this video, and then on top it would have a button for logging into the account and creating the account. All that stuff's still here. I just put a lot more other stuff too. Um, so if you have already an account, and I'm going to sign in using this button, if you don't already have an account, you can create one and then walk through the steps of verifying your email and stuff, and then come back and log in. I'm going to log into my demo account, and this uh, demo account is set to a subscriber today. So this is what it looks like if you are a subscriber to Borland Genetics Tools. Um, okay, so let's go to the resource manager where I'm going to find my father's donor profile. And there it is. And I want to choose the kit that I created uh, using the missing parent phase utility. He's got three kits attached, but it's this first here, one here that I feel like mapping. And remember, it has to be a mono kit, but it tells you right here. It, it says mono, so we know this is eligible for use with that tool. Okay, so I'm going to view, edit, delete kit. We're going to click that button. Uh, don't worry, it doesn't delete anything. It, it, it just takes you to a screen with the kit attributes and which allows you to do all of those things and a lot more. Um, and this is actually a tutorial that I made a couple weeks ago for the uh, kit attributes screen. So uh, if you want a quick survey of what, what is available on this screen and what the things do, um, this is a good one to watch. Okay, so let's scroll down to the subscribers only section and we're gonna take a look at uh, HIR Mapper version two. Uh, there's not much here right now in terms of text, uh, but that's going to change uh, after I make this video because I'm going to put a copy of this tutorial right right here on this very screen. Um, okay, so now the new HR Mapper Utility. We're going to click the button. And what it's doing, what it's thinking about, is organizing all of the matches to this kit in the database by chromosome number and then by start position on that chromosome number. So it's a, it, essentially it's created a map already in terms of uh, where all these matches lie. But uh, now we also want to uh, determine whether, whether those matches are paternal or maternal to my father and uh, account for that into a nice visual map. 
Okay, and this section here, uh, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to just mention it real quick. Uh, you can import your uh, matches if you have this identical phased kit on GEDmatch. You can copy the uh, copy and paste the the results of the uh, uh, tier one segment search tool in here, and you can include those in your analysis if you like. Uh, that's probably not the easiest thing to do right now because they um, they have uh, stopped uh, they've blocked uh, the upload of Borland Genetics kits on their site. Uh, so what you essentially have to do if you wanted to do this method was use their native tools to accomplish the same phasing uh, that you did on Borland Genetics. So basically double your work and then put it in here. But uh, there should be less and less of a need or use for that once the, the database grows because you're going to have plenty of matches on Borland Genetics eventually. Uh, and you may already if you've, uh, if you've uploaded you know, the kits for your close relatives or if you've had them uh, upload them to the site. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll down to the bottom because for our purposes, this is all just informational. There's nothing to actually do on this screen. This next screen, the proceed to the close relatives review, that's where we got stuff to do. And what we're gonna do is we are going to categorize each of the closest matches. Um, in other videos, in when, when we're working in the project context here, we're, we're, you know, this, we're using the standalone version of the tool. Uh, you don't have to do all, quite all this. Um, so if you're in, a, in if you're in a smart project, that is, if you're in a creeper project, if you're in a reverse phase project, or in a visual phasing project, but I will show you that when I do uh, tutorials for each of those features. Uh, right now, uh, it's best to learn the you know the the basic way uh, to actually use the tool as opposed to have the creeper do things for you. Okay, um, so we're just going to go through these. My father. Well, he's related to himself on both sides. He is related to both his father and, and his mother, as am I, uh, because uh, you know his father is my grandfather and his mother is my grandmother, so I'm related on both sides to my father. Uh, same here. Uh, so what I'm doing, okay, so I'm gonna exclude the kit I created for John Oral Borland. It's, it, that is a kit for his father, and what I'm gonna end up using this map for is to create a kit for his father, so if I included it, it would be kind of like circular logic. Um, uh, I've already done this process, in other words, in my in my research account, and that's one of the that's one of the things I did to create his kit. So I'm going to exclude that uh, and show that it could be done without you know going in circles. Uncle Jeff on the Borland side, uh, Weldon. That also relies upon this kit of John Borland. It's another reconstruction I did, so I'm also going to exclude that just to you know, okay, for consistency. Uh, my brother, he is a descendant. He is a descendant, so he's on both sides. So we can move those here. Um, this is the kit we created in another paternal and in another tutorial for his mother. We'll put mark that as maternal. That is my father's mother's kit. Um, now we got some private ones administered by me, and I don't remember who they are. Uh, they're probably pretty close, and I'm worried that they might be on both sides. So I'm not going to mark them as question mark. I'm just going to exclude them just to be on the safe side, um, just because I don't remember who they are. And it says private here because they're in my other account. And since they're in a different account, I can't see who they are because I had marked them private from that account. Um, so, okay, so we got more kids here for my grandmother. We'll make those maternal. Uh, my father's maternal brother, the maternal half brother. Uh -huh. uh, private donor administered by me. We'll make that exclude, maternal, exclude, exclude. That is my father's mother's sister. That's maternal. I uh, can't see who this is. A Scandinavian side. That's my father's mother's side. Same here with the Olsons. Uh, same here with these kits by my, co my father's maternal cousin, Richard. I don't know who they represent, but I know they are all on that side of the family. Um, So this is going pretty quick now. Um, Pearl Beatrice Price out in Ohio. Uh, John, the Kales also out in Ohio. My father's side. My father's father's side. Uh, exclude, exclude, exclude. Um, and again, I'm going to show you a way to do this uh, to cheat and do this faster in a future video. But for now, let's let's just finish here. 
paternal, paternal, paternal. And I'm just using, you know, information that I know about these, these people. I know how they're related to me. Um, okay, so now we have an option. We can save or not save to the phase map blocker. I recommend saving. If you have, you know, paid for a subscription, you might as well use it. And it'll just store this map on Borland Genetics website so it could be integrated with other tools. Um, okay, and then you have the second option, which is grouping mode. And always pick group by segment. I would never ever pick anything but group by segment unless you are doing the phased pseudo sibling method. Uh, most of the time, when you use this method, when you do you know the automated visual phasing, you're going to be doing it through the creeper, and the creeper is going to select this for you anyway. So unless you are you know really into doing this by hand, the visual phasing pseudo sibling method, you're probably never ever ever going to click this button. It'll always be group by segment. Uh, and what it does is it, it tries to find, if you click this, it tries to find when matches are in, the, in a specific generation, whereas this will set the borders of the segments based on every recombination point it can find. Um, probably not the clearest explanation, uh, but I could make a blog post on that that could explain it in more detail. It's probably not best suited for a tutorial. Just all you need to know is don't ever click the second one. Always click the first one, unless you really, really know what you're doing. Okay, so let's proceed to the results. And here's what it shows us. Uh, it's successfully saved to the locker. And we can click on download the map if we want to download a copy onto the computer. So let's download the map. Um, now let's view it in the locker. So these are two different things. One is saving on the computer, and there it is down there. Uh, but also it saves it to the system. And let's take a look at the, at the phase map locker, and there it is. Map title, incorporates matches from Borland Genetics Database, uh, subject donor, and the it's not in any projects. We haven't created any projects yet. We haven't done any tutorials for that. Um, the associated kit ID, and if we clicked on this, it'll take us back to that kit attribute screen, and there'll be like a, a mini phase map locker down here, and it has the same action options. Now let me show you just how to get to the uh, uh, phase map locker just in case you're on a different screen because you're not always going to be coming here from the HIR mapper tool. It's under tools and it's down there, uh, phase map locker. And that'll take you to your main, you know, you grand unified phase, uh, phase map locker. Uh, the ones on the kit attributes page is only going to be phase maps associated with that kit. And the same, same goes for the, the, the mini version that's on the project pages. Those are only going to be phase maps associated with that project. But when you go to the tools, this is your master, you know, phase map locker that shows all, the, all of the, uh, phase maps you've created or uploaded, um, which in this case is one because I just started making these tutorials. Okay. So let's, uh, We've already downloaded it. I don't want to delete it. Let's do a graphical preview. Let's see what it looks like. So blue is paternal, pink is maternal. And it's done a pretty good job of deciding uh, what's what on, on, on this kit. Um, and the black uh, sections are ones where there are no matches in the database. And this is probably most likely to happen on uh, some of my father's uh, some of my father's father's lines. I suspect that a lot of those will be blue, and uh, well, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to research those at some point. Hopefully, uh, more people will upload to Borland Genetics, and as they do, um, it should be easier to uh, designate the side of these segments because uh, there'll be more matches in the database upon which we can, you know, base this kind of decisions. Uh, so I'm encouraging as many people as possible to upload. And when they do, eventually this is going to make nice, you know, more, more complete charts. Green is where it has a matches though. It does have matches and it couldn't decide what side it was. So that's one of the reasons we want to download our, our thing here, because what we're going to do is when we have that happen, we just go to DNA painter and I am going to, I'm already logged in. So let's create a new map. I'll call it test. Uh, no, it's demo. That sounds better. Uh, save and stuff. Uh, we'll call it female just so for whatever. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to the settings here or to the wheel and we're going to import the segment data. Um, 
I don't want to exclude any segments. So I'm just going to change that to zero. It's going to warn me. But uh, I'm going to use the Borland Genetics logic uh, instead of the logic that's on the screen too. Uh, when it created the segments, it used criteria that I think is fine. Okay, so let's choose the file. And this is actually my second take of making this demo. So there are two here, but they're the same. Um, so here it is. And then let's take a look at it. And it should look, you know, a lot like the preview we just looked at a minute ago. Now let's take a look at that green section because it has patches. Uh, just hadn't decided what side of the family they are. And John Perigo Smith, that is a paternal relative to me. So I'm just going to edit the segment and I am going to move it from unresolved to father of Stephen and save segment. And there we go. And if I want now, I got to re-upload this to Borland Genetics. Okay, so that's it for today. That is our demo on uh, the HIR mapper tool. What we did is create a, a phase map or a chromosome map for this uh, phased kit. Um, so this kit is up to, you know, step two in the Borland Genetics method of uh, uh, phase map extract and merge. So um, that's call it a day. We've, uh, we've successfully created a map uh, for this kit. See you next time.